I want to discuss the term Naad with you. So tell, tell us why it, what it means and why it's not the same thing as sound. A lot of people yeah. equate. So first let us understand what uh, Nada is. Any Shastra will have its own uh, set of uh, uh, technical terms called as Paribhashika Padas, which a student of that particular Shastra has to first learn in order to be able to study the Shastra more deeply later on. Uh, Vyakarana Shastra, Alankara Shastra, each Shastra has its own set of Paribhashika Padas. And Sangeeta Shastra, music also is a science. So Sangeeta Shastra has its own set of Paribhashika Padas. And the very first Paribhashika Pada that a student of Indian music learns is Nada. And this you don't find in any other system of music. This is exclusive to Indian music. And if we have to see how it is defined, Sangeeta Ratnakara, um, an authoritative treatise that was written around the 12th, 13th centuries by Shangadeva, it defines Nada as Nakaram Prananamanam Dakaram Analam Viduhu Jata Pranagni Samyogat Tena Nado Bhidhiyate. So the word Nada is made of two letters, Na and Da. Nakaram Prananamanam. Nakara stands for the prana shakti or in, in, in this case it is the prana vayu and dakaram analam viduhu dakara stands for anala or agni or fire jata pranagni samyogat tena nado bidhiyate so nada is thus produced or created out of the unison of the uh, prana shakti and the agni in the human body and this text goes on to explain in great detail the whole process that is involved in the production of Nada in the human body. It is first the Atman which directs the Manas to produce the Nada and um, the Manas in turn instigates the Prana Shakti. Prana Shakti interacts with the Agni and thus Nada is produced. And the Nada that is produced travels through, in the human body, it travels through Nabi, Hridaya, Kantha and Shiras. So it travels through that path and it gets expressed. And this has been uh, beautifully explained by several great uh, uh, saint composers uh, in our tradition. For example, you have Sri Tyagaraja Swami. In, in a composition of his, uh, he describes Pranalala Samyogamu Valla Pranavanadamu Sapta Swaramulai Baraga. So that is, this has been, uh, uh, the same idea is reflected in Tyagaraja's uh, Kriti. And Nabi Hritkanta Rasana Nasa Dula Indo Shobhillu Sapta Swara. So it's Nada which gives rise to the Swaras later on. So all this comes from the unison of the uh, Pranavayu with the Agni in the human body. Very good. So the, it, this is Sankhya based Basically, philosophy. Yes. And the human body is the musical, is the instrument. Is the instrument, yes. So I'm going to ask some in, uh, some questions. Yes. Yeah. Nada cannot be just any sound. Yes. Because if it's raining, that is not produced by the same mechanism. See, basically, nada is classified into uh, two types. One is ahata nada and anahata nada. Yes. Uh, Sangeet Ratnakara says, ahato anahata sheti dvidha nado nigadyate. So, ahata nada is nada that is struck, that is heard externally. So, the nada that is produced by uh, the human voice or the musical instruments or the elements of nature like the birds, animals, rivers, etc. All this come under ahata nada. And anahata nada is that which is uh, unstruck or non-vibratory. Ahata nada is produced by vibration. Anahata nada, you, know, you don't need any vibration. It is non-vibratory, it is internal and mystical. So this is something which is uh, not audible outside, but it has to be experienced. It is something that can be experienced by only great uh, yogis or sadhakas who have had spiritual insights, deep spiritual insights. So the anahata, uh, how is it related to Carnatic music? Because here you are vocalizing externally. Yeah, we are now dealing with only ahatanada. Okay. Anahatanada is another possibility when you internalize and become a yogi and I've heard scholars uh, say that there are the seven chakras in the human body, the spiritual centers um, along the Kundalini from the Muladhara to the Sahasrarha and the chakra that pertains to the chest area is called as the 
Anahata Chakra. Yes, of course. Yeah. And those yogis who are able to meditate upon this Anahata Chakra and tap that Anahata Chakra are the ones who can experience this Anahata Nada, is what I've heard. But in the context of Carnatic music, right. is Nada human only hmm. or is it also a mechanical sound? Because it is the external sound. Yeah, I, I will clearly explain what is the difference between a Nada and a sound which is not Nada. Yes, please do that. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Nada has a, uh, in Indian music, Nada has been always uh, viewed with a uh, philosophical dimension. So it is uh, said to have been originated from the Omkara or the Pranavanada. Yes. So it is the all pervading eternal musical sound of the universe from which originates all beings and all speech. Right. So there is a very popular uh, shloka which says, Yonada Sarva Bhutanam Sarva Varanasya Chankuraha Yobijam Mantra Kotinam Tam Nityam Pranamamiham. So it is uh, identified with the Bindu. You know, they say, Yato Bindu Stato Nadaha. And uh, Matangas Brihad Deshi, uh, um, sixth uh, century text, it says, Tato Bindu Stato Nada Stato Matra Stvanukramat. So it is the root or the center point of the creation or the cosmos from which, from, from which everything else emerges. And um, it is Nitya and Anirvachaniya. It is, it always, it's always there in the creation. It never dies. It is something which doesn't have a beginning or an end. It is eternal. And after having explained all these things about Nada, beyond a point it is Anirvachaniya. Yeah. It is inexplicable. Yes. You just have to explain. Non-conceptual. Yes. Yeah. And uh, coming to the practical aspect of Nada that we see in uh, music, not just in Carnatic music, both Hindustani and I mean Indian music, uh, because both Hindustani and Carnatic music are based on the same principles of Nada. The word, very, the very sound of the letter Na and Da, you know, the soft syllables, so they are suggestive of melody. And one special feature which distinguishes Nada from a sound which is not Nada is, Nada, the quality that Nada must have is avichinnata or dairgya. It must be long enough. So there must be that continuous, sustained musical sound. So if I clap, this is a sound. But if I ring a bell, that is Nada. If I hit on wood, that is sound. But if I hit on um, a stretched membrane, animal skin, which like a mridangam or a tabla, a musical instrument, percussion instrument, that is nada. If I say, mm, that will be sound. But if I say, mm, that will be nada. So the basic quality of that nada is it must have a continuity, it must be a sustained sound, it must be a musical, melodious, pleasing sound. But the requirement that it has to be produced with prana is not there. In those cases. Yeah, you know, even if you are playing an instrument, your prana shakti is working True, there. True, but if you have rain, then it is just... There is the eternal prana shakti, I mean the, the, the uh, prana shakti of the cosmos. No, but uh, in, the, in the physiology of the body that is required to produce... Yes. ...is not there in... It is not there in that case, yes. Uh, the, def the definition that I gave is the uh, process that explains the production of nada in the human body. Okay. And how it travels. Uh, when it comes out, when it so, gets expressed. So I have a question on uh, technology here. Hmm. I'm not a technical person though. <laughs> but, uh, but you have to answer this. Yes, let me try. When an iPod is singing, okay. is that nada? If you record music, yes. now it is, uh, uh, it is not produced by anybody's prana. It has earlier been produced by somebody's prana. No, that's prana. okay, but uh, it is turned into bits, binary numbers, digits. Yes. A and uh, machine yeah. is looking at these and, uh, and uh, making mechanical sounds, what you're calling short sounds, which are not nada, but a series of these so quickly that yes. it appears to us that it is long. So it is kind of an illusion that this is a nice long sound, but it is mach the machine makes it out of very tiny, tiny little yes, sounds. Yes, yes. The, 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 the continuous sound is kind of broken into pieces. Yes. Yes. And, and, and this binary code which it has, it gives it uh, instructions on which sequence it has to generate. Hmm. So in doing so, it is not using any human apparatus. Hmm. It is not using the human body uh, in the Sankhya sense hmm. to produce it. Uh, so, if I listen to uh, uh, a mach machine recorded hmm. recording, hmm. Uh, is that nada or is it just that my ear 
is reminded of nada is reminded of nada that is yes. all i can say it is nada which has already been produced earlier yes. which the machine is now trying to just uh, produce with its technology right so it cannot definitely come anywhere close to a live musician sitting in front of you and singing machine reproduced got it sound yeah which is indifferentiable from human sound in the even in it the it is ear, differentiable even in the most trained ear no no but i would i would say if you have the most trained ears of uh, best musicians in the world yeah. and you say okay now i'm going to g- give you this sound sometimes it's a person sitting there who's li- singing it is vrinda singing okay and sometimes it will be vrinda's recording vrinda is gone and recording is here now you got to tell which is which i think i can tell the difference anybody can tell the difference okay <laughs> then 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 you beaten then you beaten the <laughs> machine reproducible but i would say that as the quality of the sound reproduction becomes better and better yes. and the uh, uh, replicates the real human being uh, uh, where, where a time might come when no human being would be able to differentiate the two yeah now you you also have these uh, there is a concept called like, called as sound sampling you take the sound samples of the different instruments you feed it in your ipad or system and you you play it in a sequence and it it will sound like a mrudangam or a tabla or a veena or a violin is playing right but still you can it it can never come close but that's just a limitation of uh, of the uh, machines right now right. but we are talking philosophy of what's possible right so we are saying conceptually yes conceptually is mecha- can you mechanically produce nada and replace human beings the machine has is only playing uh, the recording of a uh, uh, singing a rendition of a musician who's already sung so the machine is not producing something on its own so it's a recording that's being played so the nada the aspect of nada the quality of nada is borrowed recorded and now being played yes but that human pran is not present in this machine is not present it is just silicon yes. which is just uh, making those sounds Yes. So that's the but that's an interesting topic. Yes, yes. It's an, a very thought provoking. <laughs> so let's continue with our discussion. Okay. Uh coming back to nada, the philosophical uh, dimension of uh, nada. The speciality of this Indian concept of nada is that uh in India God has been conceived of as nada brahman. So yes. he is been perceived as the uh, uh, personification or the very embodiment of nada. and uh, through nada upasana sangeeta upasana or the worship of nada you are uh, you, you are trying to reach him so the um, means and the end are the same so worship of nada in order to experience the supreme reality which is the embodiment of nada so that is a very special uh, uh, concept which is india's contribution to world thought and uh, this whole process is called as nada yoga so we have so many great um, um musicians highly gifted musicians a divine saint uh, composers who have dedicated all their lives for music and they have experienced this supreme reality in the form of nada through nada upasana and they are called as nada yogis and these ideas are very well ref- reflected in sangeet ratnakara which says chaitanyam sarva bhutanam vivrutam jagadatmana nada brahma tadanandam advitiyam upasmahe i worship that um, matchless and blissful nada brahman who is the very consciousness in all beings and uh, uh, who gets uh, who is manifest in this entire creation nado pasanaya deva brahma vishnu maheshwaraha bhavantu pasita nunam yasma dete tadatmakaha so the gods brahma vishnu and shiva are all indeed embodiments of nada and uh, through the worship of nada you are going to worship them so that is the whole uh, concept uh, in india and um, this idea has been reflected in several compositions by our own saint uh, composers like uh, the greatest of them is uh, shri tyagaraja who says in sev- many of his compositions he says nadatmaka tyagaraja pranavanada sudara sambilano nada tanumanisham shankaram namami i worship lord shankara who is nada tanu who is of the form of nada and that's a beautiful composition which explains how the seven uh, swaras of music uh, have emerged from the five faces of lord shiva and so on and uh, even in compositions by muthu swami dikshitar he says anirvachaniya nada bindo he says nada bindu kalaspadam 
and Arunagiri Nathar's composition, he says, Nada Bindu Kaladi Namo Namo. So, the whole idea, this, this um, uh, sublime nature of Nada, that uh, the exalted status that is given to Nada is something which is unique only to Indian culture, which you don't find uh, in any uh, musical culture anywhere in the world. So, given this very profound uh, description of Nada, uh, how is it different from sound? No doubt, Nada is also sound basically. But any sound cannot be considered as nada. Only a pure, musical, uh, continuous, sustained, melodic sound which can be perceived in the aforesaid philosophical background can be considered as uh, nada. And uh, if sound uh, may represent only shabda. In fact, shabda is used in two senses. It's used in the sense of a word. It is used in the sense of sound that we hear. So, when I say sound, it can mean Shabda or Dhvani, but it uh, not necessarily means Nada. And if I just say sound, this whole philosophical background is lost. The concept of Nada Brahman is lost, the concept of Nada Yoga is lost, Nada Upasana is lost. So, identifying uh, the um, uh, eternal musical sound of the universe as, I, as unified with the Bindu, uh, the root of the creation, that is lost. So, that is the, the, the entire philosophical dimension gets diluted if you say nada is equal to sound. And one more thing is no such concept is to be found in any book on the theory of western music. So, they don't have a concept of nada, they don't have uh, this kind of a philosophical dimension to it. Is nada intelligence? Does it have intelligence? Nada is... Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's a form of creation. I mean, just like if you say Brahman. Brahman is intelligence. Brahman is intelligent. If, of course, Nada is intelligent. If it, if it is coming from Brahman. So, that's also a, a difference with sound because sound is just any sound. Exactly. It has uh, uh, the ability to produce certain effects. Now, that I think is a very important point you just made. Nada has effects. Yes. Sound is sound. It could have effects. We don't know what they are. Yes. They, nobody has... There's no... No theory of the effect of a sound. Right. In Western thought. In Western thought. And they call it sound of music. But um, uh, in our tradition, uh, even when we are comparing, let's say, two uh, musical instruments, we will say nada of instrument A is better than nada of instrument B. We will not say sound of uh, instrument A is good. That, that, that approach itself is not there. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here and also hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified. To donate, please click this button.